present the award in the category of social adversity once again from our presenting sponsor, Silver Wheaton. Please welcome the Senior Vice President and CFO, Mr. Gary Brown. I'm back. Um, the category of social adversity recognizes that person who has demonstrated inspirational achievement in their lives in the face of discrimination, abuse, poverty, or other forms of significant adversity. She was the child of Japanese immigrants. Her childhood was spent in an internment camp. They were not allowed home until 1947. In 1960, she graduated from the University of Toronto with a diploma in dental hygiene. Two years later, she got married and had her first child. A second pregnancy and life was only getting better. And then a violent head-on collision left her with a shattered leg and a serious head injury. A tough start to a life that would not be easy. The life of Esther Matsubuchi. Esther was in the hospital for two months. Four weeks after leaving the hospital, she gave birth to her second child. Esther struggled to take care of a newborn and a toddler while on crutches. To complicate matters, Esther's husband was a project manager for an engineering firm. He was constantly on the road. They moved 17 times over four continents before settling in North Vancouver in 1979. Esther gave birth to two more children and life was good. And then, in 1989, she found a lump in her breast. Doctors confirmed the worst. Stage 2 breast cancer. With four young children, Esther agreed to an aggressive treatment plan. Surgery to remove the lump. Months of chemotherapy and radiation to kill the cancer. Pain, nausea, fatigue, hair loss. Esther endured it all. Her family will tell you she never complained. Her friends will tell you she inspired them with her fortitude and courage. But no sooner did recovery seem possible when she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. One of the ways to combat diabetes is exercise. However, at the time, breast cancer survivors were discouraged from exercising, believing it might trigger lymphedema, a debilitating and permanent swelling of the arms. So Esther did as she was told. No lovely long walks, no gardening. She gave up the piano, she gave up knitting, and she hated it. It didn't feel right. Some research led Esther to the UBC Sports Medicine Program and a doctor who believed that upper body exercise was not the cause of lymphedema that exercise was beneficial. To prove this, the clinic was putting together a dragon boat team, and Esther got on board with 23 other women. Their team was called a breast in a boat. All the women were breast cancer survivors and given a specially designed exercise and training regimen. It was a tough challenge for anyone, an almost insurmountable challenge for women whose bodies had not exercised in years. Four months after their first training session, a breast in a boat crossed the finish line and exercise was finally approved for breast cancer survivors. There are now 200 of breast in a boat teams worldwide and Esther has raced with many of them traveling all over the world raising awareness for breast cancer prevention and research. Since 1972, Esther has been volunteering. Care homes, hospitals, it doesn't matter to Esther. If she can help, she will help. That's just who Esther is and her Sunday dinners are legendary. Family, friends, neighbors, and sometimes people she just met gather around her dining room table eating Esther's excellent cooking, laughing, and sharing time together. Because what Esther serves is much more than food or hospitality. Esther serves love. Love demonstrated in practical, easy to understand terms. A helping hand, a home-cooked meal, a shoulder to lean on when the way ahead is bleak. When Esther learned that four of her brothers had been sexually abused as children by a trusted Japanese priest, she became their fiercest advocate. Esther's actions are part of an effort to cast aside the curtain hiding a dark past and finding restitution for those who suffered abuse. Last year, Ed, who Esther had been married to for 54 years, died quietly in his sleep. And she misses him every day, but she keeps on going as she has always done whenever adversity hit. Esther keeps going because people rely on her, because this world of ours needs everyday heroes. People like Esther, who meet life's challenges head on, 
who know that love and laughter bring joy, that caring and compassion make miracles, and that simple gifts will often solve the most complex problems. I think everyone should have a place to go for Sunday dinner, so I keep on doing it. That's Esther, committed, powerful, and the essence of love, all wrapped up in the courage to come back. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 Courage to Come Back Award recipient for Social Adversity, Esther Matsubuchi. I would like to thank everyone involved in the Courage to Come Back Awards, Mr. Siegel, all of the Coast Mental Health staff, and the production crew. I also thank my friends and family. Three of my four children and my number one granddaughter are here tonight. <laughs> I am very humbled to receive this award. I think there are so many people out there more deserving than me if only someone had nominated them like my daughter Wendy did for me. When F Wendy first said she wanted to do it, I thought it w there was no harm in it. Of course, I would never win. But here I am, an award-winning grandma, <laughs> accepting this award. Twenty-seven years ago when I had breast cancer, I was told it was about, I had about five years to live. I was told to cut out all repetitive movements out of my life for fear of lymphedema. Honestly, my world shrunk. My huge garden where I had spent so much time became neglected as gardening was on my new no list. The no list was really long. I joined a breast cancer support group, and that was helping me cope, but it was an unhappy time. Then one day, researchers from UBC, working with a man named Dr. McKenzie, came to speak to us, rec recruiting volunteers for a groundbreaking study of breast, breast cancer survivors. They had a radical plan. We would train for dragon boat racing, my heart was jumping at the opportunity, and I really wanted to raise my hand, but I was too scared, scared of all the no's I had been told. But a few ladies raised their hands, and their strength gave me the courage to raise my hand too. I remember how excited I was. The funny thing was, on the first day of training, none of those ladies showed up. <laughs> <laughs> but I was determined to see this through. Someone recently asked me how I felt that day. My answer to them was one word, fun. I was having so much fun. The researchers took excellent care of us, always monitoring us and measuring our wrists, arms, and biceps. I didn't need them to tell me I was strong again. A breast in a boat saved my life and gave me my life back. It is almost 22 years later, and four of us from the original crew are still paddling. <laughs> it's a lot harder to get into the boat these days, <laughs> and I hear the call go out, help Esther into the boat. <laughs> I hear that more often than I would like. 
but aging happens, and if I couldn't paddle, I feel like I would die. I often think that young people don't realize they too will get old one day. They look at us oldies and don't seem to realize we are vulnerable people in our communities. In my community, I volunteer to help residents of Evergreen House to get to the chapel because I believe everyone should have the opportunity to practice their faith. Thank you very much for this award. Oh my goodness. I can't wait for Sunday dinner, Esther. <laughs>